Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another product that I think you're going to find pretty cool. It's a brand new style of LED light bulb that will not only save you money by producing more light while using less electricity, but it's also smart enough where you can use this bulb in an enclosed fixture. It comes from our friends over at Sansi, and it's part of their SG LED line of products, and they make a few different versions of this, an 8 watt, a 12 watt, and a 16 watt, that all share the same core technology. Now, as part of this clip, I'm going to explain what the bulb does first, then I'll do some close-ups of it, and show you exactly how the technology works, then I'll come back at the end and give you some conclusions around the bulb. But before I get too deep into it, I do want to point out that this is a sponsored review. They actually sent me these bulbs to test them, so I have to let you know that as part of the clip, but I promise you that's not going to impact my impressions of the product. I've talked about Sansi before on the channel. I've reviewed a lot of their products. I love this company. So I actually heard they were coming out with this enclosed fixture bulb and I said, you know what? I got a lot of fixtures outside my house where I can't use an LED bulb. Why don't you send me a bunch of them? I'll test them and I'll put a clip together on the channel. So I'm really happy that they sent them because with my testing on this bulb, I have to tell you, with all the LED lighting products I have, I love this product because it really does the job, it's really efficient, and it's smart enough that I can put it in a closed fixture and not have to worry about it overheating. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Now, Sansi, if you haven't heard of them before, I know I've talked about them on the channel. They're a gigantic company. They have two divisions, a commercial division and a consumer division. Their commercial division has a ton of different LED lighting products out. I live in New Jersey, in New York City, at Times Square. They're all over the place out there. And a lot of the technology they put in their commercial division products ends up in their consumer electronics products as well. So what you're buying here is a bulb that's built by a company who's gigantic and has taken that core technology from the commercial side and moved it into the consumer space. So it's a really, really smart bulb. Now, what separates this bulb from everybody else on the planet? And that's really the thing, because you're probably thinking, Rick, how can you get so excited about a light bulb? Well, first of all, I'm a nerd, so I love the technology. But more importantly, I'm a cheapskate. And light bulbs are expensive to operate in your home. I did a study a couple months back, and I looked at all the expense I have for my electricity every month, and I found that 30 to 50% on a given average month of that energy cost is lighting. And it's because I'm using incandescent bulbs. I'm not taking advantage of more efficient bulbs like this. Now, I've changed all the bulbs out since then because I realized what an expense it was. But if you have to think about what you're doing every month with your lights, right? You leave lights on that you should turn off and, and you're using incandescent bulbs. And if you think about the technology behind incandescent bulbs, essentially what you're doing with a standard light bulb is you're creating a short across the 120 volt line. It heats up a filament until it gets white hot and that generates the light. And that's the way we've been doing it since the beginning of time. And I know other technologies have come along. Compact fluorescence came out. We tried those. They were kind of good, but they were dim. They didn't really throw a nice blanket of light down on the floor and they were awful blue. So when you put them in, they lit up a room, but they weren't really attractive. And I'll get into what those things mean in a minute. Then LED bulbs came out. Now the original versions of LEDs that hit about 10 years ago, again, were dim. They were kind of a bluish light. Even though they were more efficient than the compact fluorescence and lasted longer, they really weren't a good replacement for standard bulbs. And I know in my house, when I unscrewed a standard bulb and screwed in some of the early LED bulbs, and then people started seeing them, they're like, hey, what's going on with the light in this room? It's awful weird. So it wasn't really a great replacement. I can tell you that the maturity of the technology has really caught up with incandescent bulbs. So when I look at a bulb like this, how do I judge it? I judge it on brightness, I judge it on color temperature, and I judge it on another metric called CRI, which is the Color Rendering Index. Now, I'll explain what all three of those are. Brightness should be pretty obvious, right? We've lit up bulbs for a long time, and in the old days, when you looked at a bulb, the thing you looked at for its brightness was its wattage. But that's misleading, because wattage really isn't a measure of how much light a bulb can generate. It really is a measure of how much electricity a bulb is drinking. So when you had a 100 watt light bulb, you knew that all the 100 watt light bulbs drank about that much electricity, so you got about the same light out of that light bulb. The truth is, the illumination of that bulb, how much light it's actually generating, is expressed in lumens. Now, lumens is one of those metrics that we don't really have a handle on, but to give you a rough estimate of what one lumen represents, it's a single birthday candle, held about a foot away from your head. So if you have a bulb like this that's 1,600 lumens, 1,600 birthday candles. Compared to a bulb that's got 800 lumens, you get half as much brightness out of it. But lumens is what you want to look at when you're comparing these new style of bulbs against each other, whether it's an LED against a CFL or CFL against an incandescent. What makes it even more confusing is that for some reason, when the manufacturers started building these CFL bulbs and the LED bulbs, they felt they had to put some kind of equivalency on the label, which confused consumers because they wanted to try and relate it to what people understood an incandescent bulb could produce. So in this case, I've got a 1600 lumen bulb 
that's equivalent to 150 watt incandescent bulb. But that's kind of a sketchy metric because it depends on a lot of other factors. So what I'd recommend is when you're comparing these type of bulbs against the newer style bulbs, CFL or LED, look for the lumens. And again, in this case, it's a 1600 lumen bulb. Now they do make a couple of different models of this. They make a 12 watt, an 8 watt, and a 16 watt. So you can get a brighter one or a less bright one. This is the 12 watt, and that's the one I use for most of my installations. And that's 1600 lumens, which is plenty bright. All right, so that's brightness. The next metric I care about when comparing two bulbs like this is something called color temperature. And that has to do with the base color that the bulb can produce when you first turn it on. And it's measured in Kelvins. And if you think way back to your high school science classes, I know I'm getting really nerdy here. The visible light spectrum, the colors we can see, live between infrared and ultraviolet. We can't see below that, we can't see above it. The mechanics of our eyes only allow us to see that visible light spectrum. When these bulbs are produced based on the chemical composition of the LEDs, the electronics driving them, the type of lensing they're using, they fall somewhere on that spectrum. They're either going to be down the low end or they're going to be up on the high end. Now the Kelvin scale for bulbs typically ranges from about a 1000 Kelvin on the low end, which we're going to call warm, all the way up to about a 10,000 Kelvin on the high end, which we're going to call cold. And again, based on the composition of the bulb, it'll fit somewhere on that spectrum. Now, typically you're gonna use the warmer bulbs or the lower Kelvin numbers in environments that you wanna have sort of a warm lighting. Maybe it's a bedroom or it's a den, someplace where you wanna have maybe indirect lighting in there where it's a little bit softer. If you need lighting that's gonna be really focused, like if you're in the garage or you're working on a workshop, you wanna end up in that high end of the Kelvin band, so maybe around 8,000 Kelvin would be good, and that's gonna be more of a bluish light, but it's gonna give you really, really good details. And again, this is a totally personal decision, but I'm here to tell you, if you take two bulbs, one that's a 2,000 Kelvin and one that's an 8,000 Kelvin, you turn them both on, you're gonna see the difference in color, and even though they can reproduce light in general, it's gonna have a, a shade to it. It's either going to be warmer or it's going to be colder. For me, I like to be somewhere in the middle. I like that Goldilocks zone, somewhere between 1,000 and 10,000. These are 5,000 Kelvin, which is right in the middle, so they're a perfect general use bulb. You can use them at a workshop, you can use them at a den, and again, you can adjust if you need to with, with lower or higher Kelvin numbers, but I like that sort of middle of the road with 5,000 Kelvin. Now, having said that, they still produce all the colors that are out there. It's just that they favor colors in the middle, which is kind of where we see most of our, our activities during the day. So for me, that 5,000 Kelvins is right where I need to be. The next metric, or the third metric, is what's called the color rendering index. And it has to do with how accurately does the bulb reproduce a color. So again, if you've got a bulb that's on the warmer end of the spectrum, it's going to favor reds. If you have a bulb on the higher end of the spectrum, it's going to favor blues and purples. So having something in the middle gives you a nice broad spectrum of that color rendering index or CRR rating. They range from zero, which is terrible, I guess it's dark, to, to 100, which is a perfect color reproduction. The engineering behind these bulbs are getting better and better over time. They started off in the 50% range, 60, 70, 80%. And you'll notice the difference when you're looking at a color photograph or you're doing any kind of detailed work with colors. This bulb has a color rating or color rating index or rendering index of 80 plus, which is really good for a bulb. A lot of the bulbs that are on market today, you may not even know about that metric, but if you take one home that's got a 50 CRI and you plug it in, everything's gonna look sort of sort of washed out. The color's not gonna pop. So a bulb like this that gives you 80 plus on a CRI means you're gonna get bright colors, they're gonna be vibrant, and they're gonna be very realistic compared to the actual color itself. So again, a lot of this is subjective, but my recommendation is if you're looking for this type of LED bulb, get something that's really bright. Again, 1600 lumens. Get something that's got a Kelvin rating somewhere in the middle, around 5,000, 6,000 is perfect for me, probably good for you for general lighting. And if you can get a CR rating of 75 or higher, you're in really good shape. And again, this is 80 plus. So all three of those metrics are super important. And the reason I'm mentioning them is because when you're comparing a bulb like this against all the other stuff on the market, especially the ones that are on sale, use those metrics to compare them side by side because that's gonna tell you what a better bulb uh, can produce for you and is it worth the extra money. So now stay tuned and what I'll do next is take a closer look at the bulb and explain some of the technology behind why this bulb is able to adjust its brightness based on the temperature around it. Now we'll take a closer look at the bulb and you can see pretty quickly that it's about the same shape and size as a standard light bulb. And that's really important because for some reason manufacturers tend to build their LED bulbs with a really wide base, which makes it tough to get it into a lamp socket or a fixture. By having this nice curve here, it means you've got a lot of room at the bottom, which will make it easy to get it to pretty much any fixture in your home. You'll also notice right away there's a lot of vents on either side, and that's important because if you're going to use this in an enclosed fixture especially, the electronics inside are going to get warm. By having these vent slots cut in the side, any heat that's inside doesn't build up inside and damage the electronics. It has a way of getting out of the bulb and actually keeping the electronics at a very comfortable temperature. 
All right, in the top of the bulb, this white band right here is the base material that the LEDs are mounted on. I'd mentioned that that's ceramic, and that's important because a lot of companies will build that out of plastic, and the LEDs themselves are going to get warm, so that's going to warp over time, and it may melt. Some companies use metal layer, and they use a substrate between them. This is the best you can do is ceramic because it does a real good job of heat dissipation from the LEDs up top. Another thing I want to point out is this lensing on the top of it. Now, when I spin it up, you'll see pretty quickly that you can't actually see through it. I mean, it, initially I thought that was going to be clear, but it's actually a diffusing lens. And the reason that's important is because the LEDs underneath are going to create little individual streams of light. But when they hit this piece of plastic, it's going to diffuse that light and spread it out nice and evenly. And that's a design element that the people at Sansi really built into this product. And I think that helps a lot because the bulb itself will cast about a 180 degree beam, which means you're going to be pretty flat from here. It's going to cast a beam in every direction. Whereas a lot of the LED bulbs that use a clear lens on the front will throw light straight this direction, but you get off to the side, it gets a little bit dimmer. And to prove that even more, I can't resist taking stuff apart. So I actually took one of the bulbs apart and here's what it looks like. So here's the ceramic base that I was talking about. You can see it's pure ceramic. Those are all the LEDs that actually make up the bulb, and there's the electronics inside. But let me show you that lens I was talking about a second ago. So if it were clear, you could see right through it. Watch what happens when I put it down on the table. See how it turns yellow? What that's doing is the light's hitting the table, and it's reflecting that color of the table through the lens evenly. So again, a brilliant design element you might miss if you hadn't actually taken the time to tear it apart like I have and really study it. So pretty much every aspect of this bulb was well thought out and it's well constructed and they just did a great job and I still can't understand how they can sell these as inexpensively as they're offering them and they give you a five-year warranty on them, which is unheard of in this industry. Most of the bulbs you buy, you get a 90-day warranty, or if you're lucky, maybe you get six months. But to have a company that'll stand behind their product for five years is pretty incredible. I hope you can see now why I get so excited about new technology like this. Because what the design wizards over at Sansi have done is taken a standard LED technology and really enhance it to produce this product. This bulb can be used by consumers pretty much anywhere in the home, including in a closed light fixture, which is a place you can't normally use an LED bulb because enclosed light fixtures get hot and LED technology hates heat. So even though you can take an LED bulb and screw it into a closed light fixture, and it'll work for a little while, over time that increase in heat will kill the electronics and the bulb's gonna fail faster than it should. So the design engineers at Sansi sat down and said, we can build a bulb that's better than that. So we'll build a bulb that's got temperature sensors inside. And as that temperature goes up, the sensors will dial back on the intensity of the bulb and self-regulate that environment. You know what we'll do? We'll build some extra fins in it. We'll build a ceramic base that the LEDs sit on so we can dissipate the heat a little bit better. So there's four or five different design elements inside this bulb that make it completely compatible with an enclosed fixture. And for me, that's just perfect because I can guarantee you that if you unscrew all the incandescent bulbs you've got in your home and screw in a bunch of these smarter LED bulbs, you're going to save a ton of money in your electricity. They didn't stop there though. They thought about it and said, what do most consumers want? They want a bulb that's bright. So the bulb I have in front of me is 1600 lumens. That's plenty bright for any environment in your home. They make one that's 1200 lumens, which is a little less bright. They make one that's 2000 lumens, which is way brighter. So you get a choice between the three of them. Then they thought about it and said, what about the color temperature? Where should we put that? Well, they settled right at 5,000 Kelvin, which is right in the middle of the band, so it means it fits in most environments in your home. You don't have to worry about it being too warm or too cold. Just screw it in, you're gonna be happy. The final thing they looked at was the color rendering index. And I talked about that before. This bulb's got an 80 plus CRI, which means all the colors in your home are gonna pop. You're not gonna have any problems with it being dull or dim. It's gonna light up the environment for you really, really well. And the last thing they did, which I think is amazing, is they made these bulbs really affordable. So if you compare these bulbs to other bulbs on the market, you're going to find that they're less expensive than most of the other bulbs that don't have nearly as good of specs as these guys do. And the best part is, if you check the uh, comments below, they've actually given me a discount code where if you guys want to buy these, there's a code down there that'll even knock off some more money so you can get a really good deal on them. And that's pretty much all I had today. So I know I went through a lot of technology here. Please, if you have any questions about anything I've covered, drop those in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. I love doing these kind of clips. So if you guys are enjoying these, I'll continue to do them. And as I said before, I like this technology. I like this company an awful lot. But when I found out they were building a bulb like this that's designed for enclosures, I said, you got to send them to me. I got to test them because I'm using LED bulbs all over my home, but I can't put an LED bulb into an enclosure because I know it's going to get hot and they're going to fail too often. So I've used this outside in enclosures. I've used it in the house, inside of enclosures and globes, and it just works really, really well. So I like them an awful lot. So that's pretty much all I had for today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.